Welcome everybody, it's Sam Thompson, the Exhibit Services Coordinator with the NAB Show. Thanks for logging in today. The webinar today is all about improving NAB Show lead management for higher sales conversion. And here today we have James Kelly from Experian and our resident trade show expert, Jefferson Davis. Um, here we have this is part of NAB's commitment to exhibitor education success. NAB wants to help you. We've got a great resource center. Please be sure to share this resource with everyone on your team. We have live and replayable webinars, so if anyone missed the one today, you can go ahead and send it over to them. We have how-to exhibiting article series. Um, just a lot of knowledge that um, would be very useful to you. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Jefferson. Like I said, he's our resident trade show expert, and he has worked with us for quite a while. He has a lot of valuable information to share. So Jefferson, thank you, and welcome. All right. Thank you, Sam. And again, thank you to everybody for logging in. I'm uh, thrilled and honored to be back and um, working with NAB and providing this content uh, to you as exhibitors to help you uh, have a more productive and a profitable NAB show experience. Been around trade shows for 30 years. I've never viewed a trade show as a place to just show up and fly the company flag and hand out some tchotchkes and go home. I've always viewed it as an investment of human and financial capital. And as any investment, what I'm looking for, and I think you're looking for, is to get a return on that investment. So today's topic is uh, critical in the ROI formula, return on investment. So let's start off with uh, a, a, a little bit of humor, some levity here. But we got a fortune cookie over here, and then we got the uh, trade show lead capture unit. So there's a question. So what's the difference between a fortune cookie and most trade show leads? And the answer too often is that the fortune cookie might come true. And while there's a little bit of humor in this, this is a very serious uh, topic here um, because there's a lot of problems with this um, trade show leads and we're gonna try to attack those today. So let's start off getting our mental pumps primed here. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a few questions and I want you to jot your answers down in your e-workbook. So the first one is, when you think about the value your exhibit program delivers, how important are leads to that overall value? Jot your answer down to that in your workbook. Second, how do you physically capture leads now? Do you take business cards? Do you rent the show's system? Do you have a paper form? Do you own your own universal lead capture system? Next, you know, some of you maybe are following up leads direct with your own salespeople, your own staff. Some of you are probably sending your leads to dealers or distributors or maybe rep groups. Do you know what's becoming of your leads? Can you look down the line six months after the show and know what exactly became of every lead you captured? Jot your answer down to that. Next, do you set goals for leads or do you have a just kind of a catch as catch can, you know, and, and if you do set goals for leads, um, how do you do that? You know, what's your um, what's your process here? How do you do that? OK, so what I want to do is launch my first poll of the afternoon here, and I'd like to find out uh, how many of you set specific lead goals for trade shows. Um, Click the radio dial button that applies on your screen right now. Thank you. All right, we're at about 65%. Thanks. Uh, you guys are moving quick on this. I appreciate your input. I'll give you just another second, and then I'll show you what's happening with the group here. Three, two, one. Here we go. Let's post the results. So 46% of you do. Uh, congratulations. For those who said you do, I'm curious as to what your process or formula is. Um, you know, many times people will say, well, we got 100 leads at last year's show, so let's go for 120 this year. Uh, that's how a lot of companies seem to do it. 
Uh, 18% of you said, no, we don't really set lead goals. I'd be curious to hear from you in the form of the question uh, tool, um, why not? Are leads not an important part of the program for you? Or do you just not have a process or structure on how to do that? I'd be curious to hear those of you who said you don't set lead goals as to why. 36% uh, of you are in that somewhat range. Like, so you probably say, hey, lead generation is an important part of our program, but, you know, and everybody knows we should get leads, but we don't really have a lot of structure in how we're doing that. Um, so uh, let's talk about some of the, um, the insights on lead management as we start a deeper dive into this content. Here's the, here's the truth, number one, okay? If you want to get a, a financial return on your trade show investment and you're not signing contracts or writing orders on the show floor, you have to realize the real product of the show, the thing you walk out of the Las Vegas Convention Center with is leads. Okay, that's important. If, if ROI is the name of the game, leads are the mean, the means. Now, there's three statistics on the screen here which blow my mind and will probably blow your mind too. Number one is that 87% of the, the trade show leads that are captured are never followed up on. You know, on the one hand, we, we have exhibitors saying that uh, one of the primary reasons we exhibit is to get leads and the industry research is telling us that 87% of them are never effectively followed up. That second statistic, this one is really scary. Three out of four salespeople, 76%, view trade show leads as cold calls. We got to go to work on this. How can that be? Why would that be? Uh, that next statistic, 43% of buyers who go to trade show with near future purchase intent receive information from exhibitors after they've already made a buying decision. Too little, too late. So these are some shocking statistics about what's really happening with leads. And number five is that the problem is the perception of the value of trade show leads from the people who are receiving them and the capture process. So we're gonna attack these things. And number six is honestly, in my 25 years as a consultant trainer working with hundreds and hundreds of exhibiting companies, prior to working with them, very few know what becomes of their leads. So these are some of the insights on lead management, some of the problems and some of the things that are going on here. So what's, go what's going on? What's behind this? Well, number one, we already spoke to it with that, car, with, with that joke. Uh, most of the people that are receiving trade show leads from us uh, are viewing them you know, as cold calls. They don't think that the trade show leads are of high quality. We gotta fix that. Second, we have the marketing and sales disconnect. They're working in silos, not on the same page. So we gotta make sure that marketing and sales are absolutely aligned and working together and understand each other's role in this. And the third one is the lack of exhibiting staff training. Um, 80, you know, close to 90% of booth staffers have never received an hour of skills training in how to actually work in this crazy environment we call a trade show. And by training our staff, we can train them to engage and qualify and present and get better leads. But sometimes training is what we need to do this. Number four is the lack of clarity on what a lead really is. What a lot of exhibitors call leads are not leads. They're more like scans or swipes or contestants. Um, so we gotta define what is and what isn't a lead. And number five, what's behind these problems is the lack of a closed loop lead management system, a closed loop system. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna tackle all of this stuff in the next 30 minutes here. I'm gonna give you very practical 
uh, what to do, how to do, with examples, why to do. And what I want you to do as the manager, as the person who's taken time, is I want you to take as many of these ideas that make sense to you, and I want you to apply them for this NAB show. You're setting right here in the sweet spot. The NAB show is two months away. You can do probably everything that I'm going to show you in here. Uh, the question is, how much of it will you do? And I want you to do as much as you can. Okay, so let's get started here. Grab your pen, grab a calculator. We've got to have a wake up and smell the concrete type conversation here about the real cost of lead management, both uh, positive and negative. The first thing you should be calculating is your cost per lead. And it's very simple. You take your total show investment and you divide it by the number of leads you captured. Okay? So if I invested $75,000 in the NAB show and I captured 150 leads, my cost per lead was $500. It, it's not only important that I know that, but it's important that the people that I give leads to knows that. You know, like if I hand Michael 10 leads that I paid $500 per lead for, I'm giving Michael $5,000 of my company's capital. Michael needs to know that, right? He needs to be accountable for that. You know, if I handed Michael a check and said, hey, Michael, I need this check in the bank by the end of the month. You know, here's a $5,000 check. I want you to put it in the bank by the end of the month. Michael needs to do that. Otherwise, he's going to lose his job, right? Same idea with calculating and communicating costs per lead. Next, here's a great way to think about this, okay? What is the revenue opportunity, both in terms of gain and loss, if you do or don't follow up? An easy way to get to that is to take your average sale amount. So my example, let's say $25,000 is my average sale amount. And I captured 150 leads at the show. And 25% of those convert to sales. So I had 38 orders after the show at $25,000 per order. I'm talking million dollars here. 950000 See, that's what I stand to gain if I manage leads well, that's what I stand to lose if I don't manage leads well. So let's calculate the cost and share it. Let's calculate what we can gain or lose as a company by either managing leads well or not managing them. And finally, I want you to think, share this with your team. So let's say that I am a, uh, you know, a big, um, uh, you know, uh, CNN, right, or whatever, and I come into your booth at the show, and I interact with your staff, and I'm interested, and I give them my card, and I ask them to follow up. Nobody follows up. I want you to think about not only how that impacts your ROI, but I want you to think about how it impacts your company's brand in the marketplace. Okay, so the impact on your brand identity in the market. You know, there's an old saying, when people are happy, they'll tell one or two people. When people are disappointed, they'll tell 10 or 15. Okay, so we have to really set a, a rule, a law in our companies that if we take a lead, we're going to follow up on it. If you're not going to follow up on a lead, don't take it. Look the person in the eyes and say, hey, Mary, based on what you told me here, I don't think match. But you know who might be able to help you and direct them to somebody else. If you're not going to follow up on the lead, don't take it. It does more damage than good. Okay? So some ways to think about the cost and the impact of lead management, positive or negative. You can go either way with this. Okay? So let's get into uh, the structure of closed loop lead management. I want you to think of it like a circle up here with these colored uh, bars, blue, red, and green. And the first phase 
is the capture process. I want high quality leads, information rich with a committed next action. That's what I mean by quality. So I've got to think through this whole capture process, what we capture, how we capture, and we're going to talk you through that. Second, red, right? And by the way, I have capture in blue because it's the cold part of the process, I feel. Red is hot. We got to move these leads fast. We got to move them from the capture into the booth to the person who's going to follow up as fast as possible. As fast as possible, right? Then we got to follow up. We move into the green, the money part of the uh, phase here. We got to follow up and make sure that the commitments that we got from the visitor in the booth are happening. The commitments we made. We're trying to convert these leads into purchasing action, right? And then the final piece is because we want to close the loop, we want to know what became of the lead. You got to make it easy for the people who are giving these leads to report back the progress and the ultimate conversion of the lead. And those are the four phases of a closed loop lead management system. So what, I, what I'd like you to think about is how well are you addressing these four phases? Are you addressing them? All of them? So think about that and think about where you're strong and think about where you might need some improvement and then listen carefully for the rest of this webinar and find the ideas that will help you fix, bridge these gaps. Because if you do these four things, you've got a closed loop lead management. If you don't, you've got lead management, but it ain't closed loop. See, here's what's crazy about trade show ROI is that a lot of us actually are getting a significant return on our trade show investment, but we can't see it. You know, nine months after the NAB show, we close a $200,000 deal with somebody we met at NAB, and it never gets traced back to NAB because we don't have a closed loop system. I, I want to know where that business came from, you know, so that your closed loop system is the key to business development, justifying the investment, getting return on investment. Okay, so let's get into a very important topic here. We need to get crystal clear on what is and what is not a lead, and every human being on our team needs to know what we're talking about right here. So when I say a lead, there's four elements. Number one, somebody interacted with this per personal interaction. Second, questions good, the right qualifying questions were asked. Third, we captured the answers. We documented the answers. And fourth, the next step is clear in the mind of the visitor and in our mind, and it's agreed and committed to by both of us. That's a lead. I tell you what's not a lead is, like the image up here, a business card in a fishbowl. Hey, drop your card here for a chance to win a GoPro. It's not a lead. And yet a lot of companies call it a lead. You know what I call it? A contestant, right? That's what it really is. It's a contestant. Uh, a business card that ends up in somebody's pocket and you don't even know that the lead was captured. It might be a lead, but you're not going to be able to close the loop or track it. Worse yet is just somebody walks up in the booth. Here, can you send me some information? Sure. Let me scan your badge. Scan. We'll send it out to you. That's not a lead. That's an inquiry. They inquired. If there's no personal interaction, no questions asked, no answers documented, and that next step is not clear and committed to, I don't call it a lead. You know? So there was no engagement, or there, we didn't get additional information about the visitor. So let's make sure the, the big takeaway on this slide here 
that everybody on our team, when we set a lead goal, right, and we say we want 50 qualified leads, that they know exactly what we mean by a lead. And, and, and that we're getting quality leads that are information rich, more than just what's embedded in the badge. And there's a clear next step that's agreed to by the visitor. You know, you give me 500 of the what isn't a lead, and I'll be lucky to convert five. You give me 50 of the what is a lead, I'll convert 15 to 25 of those. So we don't want to get caught up in the, the efficiency trap. We want to get caught up in the effectiveness trap. I'd rather have 50 great leads that I aggressively follow through and convert than trying to find the needle in the haystack of 500 scans. So tell your boss, tell your partner, your manager, your owner uh, to get out of this quantity game and get into the quality game, which is what we're talking about. So let's go into um, a, a little bit of a scientific approach to setting lead goals that are realistic, not pie in the sky. So we use a formula called exhibit interaction capacity. And I want you to do this formula with me for your using your numbers. This formula helps you calculate the number of face-to-face -face interactions you can have in the booth. Now, listen carefully here. Not all interactions will be leads. Some percentage will be. So we're going to factor that in. Okay. So here's what it looks like. Do this with me. NAB show has 27 exhibiting hours. How many people are going to be in your booth on average staffers that are engaging visitors for those 27 hours? Write your number down. Multiply it by the number of hours and you have your total staff hours. That's your capacity for interaction. Then set a target number of interactions per hour per staffer. I'm going to recommend you be in the three to five range for interactions per hour per staffer. Conservative three, moderate four, maybe aggressive five. So that means each food staffer is going to try to interact with at least, in my example, four visitors per hour. So my total target number of interactions is 216. What is your number? Now, not all of those interactions are going to convert to lead. Some percentage is. As a starting point. I'm suggesting that you use one out of four as a starting point. Now you have a very clear, mathematically, scientifically based approach to setting a lead goal. All you got to do now is put your staff on task for four interactions per hour and one lead per hour per staffer. It's easy, right? And now everybody knows what we're trying to do here. So this is how you can set specific, realistic, doable lead goals. So remember this about trade shows. Um, it's, one, it's about face. But two, it's about next. What's next? Tra write that down. Trade shows are about face and next. So clarity of what's next and commitment to what's next are the leverage point to improving lead quality. If you haven't talked to that person about what, what, what our should be and when would you like that to happen and are you committed to taking that next step, then you haven't really qualified the lead. You know, if you've ever got leads at a show and you said, wow, this guy's like really interested. And I gave it to my sales rep and he called him three times. And the guy never took his phone call, never returned his call. What was his problem? He said he was in. Did he say he was interested? 
So we got to train our staff on this stuff so they understand this. Okay, and uh, you know when it comes to commitment, the old uh, scripture uh, tells us w wisely: uh, "Ask, and ye shall receive." Right. So what do you ask? Well, let's talk about that. If you haven't done this already, I'm going to recommend that you have um, a meeting or a call or whatever with your sales or your dealers or your distributors and ask them, what information would you like us to capture that would really help you value the lead, understand the lead, want to follow up on the lead, want to report on the lead? So, so you want to get more than just what's embedded in the badge, okay? So sometimes their email address may or may not be embedded in the badge, if that's important to you. You might want to capture what products they're interested in, how high the interest. You might want to talk about their buying role or influence. You might want to talk about their evaluation process and or team, the decision team. You might want to ask what uh, uh, products or solutions they're currently using or, or who they're buying from or what they're, who else they're looking at. You might want to find out the, the time frame for this type of purchase. You might want to ask about budgeting and money and funding. You definitely want to ask about next, what's next. So what I want you to do, the takeaway from this slide is that I want you to identify what information besides name, title, address, phone, what qualifying information. Then I want you to customize your capture device to guide your booth staff to eat quickly and easily get this information. Don't just accept what's embedded in the badge. Think through what information you need to qualify a lead, build it into your device, train your staff around it, and your lead quality will improve fast and furiously. So some best practices on to get sales teams or dealers or distributors to support your trade show lead management improvement process. Number one is be very clear about your commitment and what you're doing to improve the quality of leads. We are on a total quality, total lead quality improvement program, right? We're going to get better leads than we've ever gotten before. And here's what we're going to do to get it. Then calculate and share your cost per lead. Remember the example I gave you about Michael, $500 per lead. Predetermine three post-show reporting dates, firm dates. Maybe it's 30, 60, 90 days. Maybe it's 45, 90, 180 days. Maybe it's 90, 180 days in a year. I don't know what those time frames are for you, but clarify them and set them. Consider a contest to get everybody dialed in and everybody supporting the program. The dealer that gets the highest percentage of their leads to a confirmed in-person appointment within 45 days wins X. The dealer that gets the highest percentage of their leads to written proposals within 90 days wins Y. The dealer that gets the highest percentage of their leads to convert to closed business and reports back on what that business was wins Z, X, Y, Z. 45, 90, 180 days, tiered. And now you'll have buy-in and support and excitement, right? And something beyond just the sale, the recognition and something to win, okay? And here's a pretty radical idea. You know, if you're paying $500 a lead and you're sending them out to dealers, distributors, or reps, and they're not following up on the lead, once you've gone through and improved the quality, and they know you've improved the quality, um, you might consider charging for the leads rather than just giving. 
I, I tell you what, if you hand Michael 10 leads and he has no skin in the game, it, it could be easy for Michael to wait until whenever to follow up. If Michael paid $50 a lead f for a lead that cost you 500 what do you think the odds are that he's going to follow up on that lead? Pretty high, right? A lot higher. So, someone once said, people only value what they pay for, right? They only value what they pay for. So if you're having a problem getting dealer, distributor, reps to follow up, consider charging them. Radical idea, right? Now, let's talk, let's get into capture. Let's get into the process of capturing. I already gave you an exercise in terms of what information do you need to be capturing. Now I want you to think about the device or the tool that you're using to capture it. There's basically four generations. You could collect business cards. You could create and use a paper form. You could rent the show capture system. You could rent and customize the show capture. Then you could maybe buy or own a universal lead capture system. Okay, so I want to do a quick poll here to find out how you currently capture leads in the booth. Click the radio dial button that applies. Do you take business cards? Do you have a paper form? Do you rent the show system? Do you have a universal? You own your own lead capture system. Okay, you guys are fast. Thank you for your um, input here. We're at, uh, we're at over 80%, so I'm going to share the results here. Okay, so here we go. 67% of you rent the show's system. Congratulations. I think it's a big mistake to have somebody walk into your booth, hand you that badge to scan, and you can't scan it. I think it's a big mistake. I think it's too early in the relationship to have that kind of a speed bump or a hiccup. 15% um, of you collect business cards. It, it's not that collecting business cards is bad, but if that's your only capture device, you got a problem. And I tell you what the problem is. How much information can you capture on a business card? Not much, right? Does the business card guide your booth staff in what questions to ask? No. Does the business card give them a quick and easy way to capture information? No. So if that's your primary and only capture device, I'm going to recommend you minimally move to paper, but ideally move to electronic. And sometimes augmenting the electronic system with a paper form is a good way to go too. Okay, so, so we did our poll. Now, this is a great example here of not only creating a paper form if you were to go this route, but also of what information would be in your electronic system. So first, you've got to have contact information, right? Then you want to, what is their relationship with your company? Is this a customer? Is it a prospect? Is it a supplier? Is it uh, a potential new account? Then, if you're doing good pre-marketing, which I strongly encourage you should be, how'd they hear about your exhibit? What a great place to capture this, right? Then, situational questions. Situational questions are about the visitor. What type of company do you work with? And what do you do with the company? And what products or services are you using in this area? And what are some of the goals or the problems or the challenges that you're facing? And questions two through five in this example are situational questions. They're what I call front-end qualifiers. Now, once I've asked my situational questions, I have enough information to determine what solutions I should talk about. And now I'm going to go ahead and present. And then I'm going to come back and go to my uh, qualification questions, which are six through nine, right? Like, uh, what is your role in... Uh, evaluating or making decisions on this type of uh, product. Um, where are you in the evaluation process? Uh, what is your time frame for, uh, if you were to implement this type of a solution, what's your time frame? And you could also add budget or funding. Do you have budget or funding in place for this? 
and what's our next step. And then you'll notice having space for freehand notes is important. And notice down on the bottom where it says priority, A, B, C. So this is a great guide in terms of how to think through uh, the areas that the type of information and the natural flow of the information. It's a great example of how to work through this. Okay, now the NAB show makes available to you um, lead retrieval. And Experian is the official lead retriever. And we're not here to sell you anything on this webinar today, but we do want you to be aware of what's available. So I've got James Kelly with me here from Experian. James is going to overview the three systems, but uh, if you have questions, uh, you can contact Georgia Martin at Experian. Her phone number and email address are on the screen and your workbook. And you can also order lead retrieval on the official vendor's website at the URL below. So, James, um, tell us uh, just a little bit about these three different uh, lead retrieval options. Great. Thanks, Jefferson. Um, good afternoon, everyone. The, the first option that's on here is our swap um, application that you can download onto your own phone or device. And this is our relatively new option. Maybe you can get a to them without that. You can a couple of ways. And this allows you to capture these anytime, anywhere on your own personal device. The sex, second option is the option RTC package, and that is a handheld scanner that will allow you to scan the badge, scan the QR code. And with this, it actually also allows you, if you're one of the exhibitors that likes to have a paper printout, to have a paper printout of that lead. And the third option is a swap and Android tablet package. So if you want to be able to use um, our device to leave it in the booth and pass it around from different staff people, you can do a swap application. Um, but you can do it on an extremely simple device. The thing that all three of you have in common is that all of the leads are captured in real time and sent to the swap pool. So if you are a sophisticated exhibitor and have somebody back into the home office that's following up real time, they are able to access the portal and see those leads that are coming in. Um, if you're an exhibitor that's not that sophisticated, they want to look at the leads in the booth, and then you go back to the hotel room and log into the same portal. And do that. that covers all three of these devices. Uh, the other thing with these three is their ability to do multiple custom lead qualifiers. So Jefferson was saying earlier that if you want to ask those questions, you can help drive the, the most lead follow up. And all of these devices allow you to do All right, James, thanks for your um, 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 overview of that. Again, we just want to give you an overview. Um, was everybody um, able to hear that? Um, there were times where I could hear the audio well. And so if anyone had any problems uh, hearing it, it looks like I did get a couple comments here, James, where people uh, weren't able to hear. So what I would suggest... Um, is um, that you could contact Experian directly, but also he basically uh, gave just some color commentary to the bullet points that are on the screen here. So this gives you, but my main suggestion here is that if you have uh, questions about lead, lead retrieval, that um, you contact Georgia Martin at Experian, here's her phone number and her email address, um, as a next step. So. Uh, Thanks for uh, the overview, James, and also thanks for Experian for uh, raffling away a uh, lead retrieval unit to somebody on today's webinar. We appreciate it. Uh, do we have any questions that have popped up at this point on really anything that we've covered here so far? Let me take a look into the queue and see. I am view. I, I am not seeing any questions right now, so what I'll do is come back on the back end. Remember, uh, everybody listening, then, at any point during the webinar, you can submit a question. Just go into the question box, type it, press send. All right, so let's keep moving along here. Now, this next topic is very important because not all leads are created equal. And what we want and what your dealers and your distributors and your sales team wants is quality leads, not quantity. They want quality. They don't want to have to 
uh, look for the needle in the haystack. They, they want the needle, okay? So the way you do that is not only you build a good qualification system questions and you have a good capture device and you train your staff on guiding the conversation, but you also build a grading or a scoring system. So you ask, what information would help me assign value? In my example, it's time frame, budget, and buying role. So I've, and number two, then I've got three codes here, time frame, budget, buying role. Now in step three, I define what each of those codes mean. So time frame, you can see I'm zero to three, four to six, seven to nine, 10 to 12 months, more than a year and unknown, okay? Uh, in buying role, you can see how I'm using final say, specifier, recommend, no role. And budget identified is pretty clear, yes or no. Now in, in step four, I gotta make sure that this data is integrated into the capture device. And I also inform my staff that these are must ask questions. You've got to ask these questions in the booth. We've got to be able to determine the value of a lead. So we build these into. Now, when the show's over, you can put these leads into buckets, A, B, C. Not based on guesswork, but based on uh, accurate accuracy and, and questions. Now, to drive a lead improvement program, uh, it's important to uh, assign a captain. And the captain is gonna drive the ship here. The goals, the devices are available and functioning. He's monitoring the goals day to day, uh, you know, shift to shift. He's acknowledging performers or she and correcting non-performers. It might be the person that ensures the data moves into the CRM system and gets routed to the right person. And it might be, the captain might be the point of contact for post-show reporting. Then you wanna build that culture of reporting accountability. So you communicate cost per lead, you inform the person who's gonna re receive the leads, you inform their boss or their manager. And we talked about contests. The end of shift or the end of day in booth lead review meeting is very important. You gather everybody up at five, five o'clock and you take 10 or 15 minutes to review the goal. How many leads did we capture? How much information did we get? And then as the manager, as the exhibit manager, you want to do a close of show report, which details your goal and the number captured, your cost per lead, uh, breaking down your percentage and number of A, Bs, and Cs, and the potential revenue value of the leads. Okay? So um, we talked about these earlier. Make sure that you've got your sales team, dealer distributors dialed in uh, to support your program. Okay, uh, follow up fast, okay? When we talk lead response, uh, there was a study out of Harvard Business Review very recently I read that I pulled some of this data from. Fast information delivery means higher conversion rate. So if you have the option of uploading PDFs, information literature, into the capture device and sending that right while you're with the person, that will be very helpful. When your sales team is gonna physically pick up the phone and make calls, Wednesday and Thursday are the two best days of the week to do that. The best times are between four and 5 p.m., the highest response rate. But the average trade show a person that gets a lead, they stop following up after two attempts. It's not enough, right? A few more call attempts, four or five. And don't just call, use email, use, right? Use social media, use telephone. Um, can increase both the contact rate and the lead conversion rate. Okay, so those are some uh, ideas on best practices. Uh, make sure that you've got your follow-up plan ready before you get to the show. Do not wait to come home and figure this out. Two or three weeks will pass. Move fast, right? Six to 12 months touches over the next three to six months. Use multiple media in your lead follow-up. Don't just email and keep emailing. Drop in a phone call, Use connect on LinkedIn. Uh, use mail. If they're within a place where you can go visit them, drop in and visit them, right? But develop that plan in advance and deliver value through your follow-up. Don't just always be selling, right? Inform them, educate them, uh, use, you know, 
posts, social media posts, newsletters, um, case studies, uh, other content that you find that is relevant to your audience. So make sure you've really got a great follow-up plan put together. Uh, if you're going to use mail, there's some best practices here in your workbook. And I'm not going to go through these bullet by bullet because they're in your workbook. But uh, oversized postcards are really good. And I like to design a three-part post-show spaced mailer. Maybe it's 10 days, uh, uh, 21 days, and uh, 48 days. If you're using email to follow up, make sure you put NAB show, here's what you requested. Keep that subject line short. Make it relevant. Okay? Uh, phone, there's some good things on here. When you're in the booth, ask them, uh, what's the best time to call you? And I tell you, if you really want to qualify the lead, see if you can get their cell phone number. <laughs> right? Social media, you should connect with all of your leads. LinkedIn, connect with them. Look at the groups they're in and join those groups and become members. Add to and start conversations within these groups. Okay, so some good practices here for using social media in your follow-up. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground in a very short period. Um, so I'm going to take a look in, in, in the question queue. And while I do that, uh, Sam, any thoughts or closing comments um, from NAB as we begin to wind down and I address these questions? Um, nothing in particular, but thank you. That was great. Um, I just hope that everyone today goes away with a couple of useful takeaways. Um, we're looking forward to seeing everyone in April. All right. Thanks, Sam. Uh, James from Experian, any closing thoughts, comments, or questions? Uh, no, not at all. I'm sorry you guys couldn't hear me. Um, if there are any questions about the lead management device, read it. reach out to Georgia, and she will take care of you the way she has for the last six years. Okay, thank you both. And uh, there's a few questions here I'm, I'm going uh, to address. Question one is, what is a universal lead capture system? Um, today that are making some really sophisticated lead capture devices uh, that you can purchase versus having to rent. Uh, and they've got a lot of bells and whistles. But here's the thing. Uh, typically, if you're doing a lot of shows, then it might make sense for you. But if you're only doing one or two shows a year, you'll be better off renting the official lead retrieval and customizing it. But universal lead capture systems are uh, ap applications that can be uh, put onto iPads, uh, Androids, smartphones, that uh, you own the software versus renting it. Okay, um, let me see questions. Uh, someone asked, do you have a good list of qualifying questions my staff can ask? Yeah, I kind of showed that to you on that form. You want to put those questions into front end, back end. Front end questions are situational. Who are you talking to? What does their company do? What do they do with the company? How are they involved in your type of uh, product or service? What are they doing now in this area? Uh, what's frustrating them? What's bothering them? What's keeping them awake at night? Th those are front end situational questions. Back-end questions are about buying influence, uh, buying process, evaluation team, uh, budget, money, funding, time frame. So those are the front-end, back-end flow of our types of questions that you want to ask. Um, someone's uh, making a comment here. We use a combination of a paper form and an a, uh, iPad. I like that. You know, oftentimes, sometimes it's not very quick and nimble to really put a piece of technology between you and the visitor and having a paper form or or maybe you only have one capture device one electronic but you've got four booth staffers so uh, so I think augmenting an electronic system with a paper system that'll give you give you the flexibility then you can transfer the data from the paper into the electronic so I, so I think that's good um, let me see what else we got for questions um, Most of the people are saying they're not convinced of the value or the ROI of renting the electronic uh, lead capture. Here's one point that I'll make on that. And I said this earlier. You don't want somebody walking up to you, a buyer, it's their first interaction with your company, and they hand you their badge to scan, and you can't scan it. That in and of itself, to me, is reason enough to have the electronics system. 
because it's a speed bump, right? And their thought is, huh, seems like everybody else can scan my badge. I wonder why these guys can't, right? So you want to make sure that you have the uh, um, um, some, some way to scan when the show has the electronic uh, badges. Got a comment here. Uh, someone's saying there's no way to really quantify as we meet people throughout the year at other shows. Um, when you're using CRM, uh, like Salesforce or whatever, uh, I use Goldmine, people use ACT, whatever. Uh, there is, but what you have to do is you have to enter, if it's a contact that you're already dealing with, then you have to enter a history record into the CRM. Michael talked with George at NAB about this. He was interested in this and that. The next step was this. So you can track, but, you, but you've got to make it a habit of every time you contact an existing customer or a prospect that it's getting entered into the CRM system and you're linking it to the individual shows. Okay. Uh, let me see. James, this question would be for you. Um, and, 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 and I'm not sure it's a question, but I'll try to bring it to you. We've had problems with digital information collection where we've scanned leads and then we uh, uh, didn't get the data. Actually, that's not for you, James, as I look deeper at it. Um, meaning that they're just scanning the card and there's not much data. I think it's important that you look at what data is there, which is why I think you should customize your capture device, and then you uh, Make sure that you know what questions to ask. And if there are holes when you scan their card and you see these holes, that you that you train your booth staff to fill these holes. Okay, so you may never have that uh, uh, chance again. Okay. Um, someone asked me, what do you mean by six to 12 touches? Touches are contacts. You know, so a touch would be a contact, whether it was email, telephone, voicemail, mail, social media, a touch. Okay, um, we've got another question here. Uh, how can you make sure that a universal capture system will work with the show? You have to contact Experian and, you, and you've got to, um, uh, basically you've got to purchase the right, I believe, to be able to, to because the data is encrypted. Okay, so there will be a fee on that, but it's worth uh, it's totally worth it. Okay, so my advice: you've got to contact the official lead retrieval con vendor, tell them what you're using, and, and make sure that you're working together that you can get that system. Okay, uh, final question, and then we're going to wrap. Um, how many questions are good, and how many are too many? Two or three front-end situational questions. People will talk about themselves. You just got to ask two or three back-end questions. And if you're guiding the conversation, you've built your question flow good, um, you know, and the questions up front are about them, that get them talking about their company, what they do with, what they're doing, what their problems are. They'll be very engaged. Then when you come on the back-end, you can ask the qualifiers, and it'll be a lot easier because you have already conditioned them to uh, talk and answer your questions. So, all right, so I wanna thank everybody for logging in. Uh, another great webinar. Remember, um, the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center, NAB Show really cares about you. They want you to succeed. They, they will give you the access to the, to the market. They'll give you the knowledge like this, and they'll give you the tools, but it's up to you to use them all. So on behalf of everyone at NAB Show, my company here, Competitive Edge, I want to thank you for logging in. This webinar will be recorded and uploaded for replay viewing on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center. So thanks for logging in, everybody. Have a great day and have a great NAB show. We look forward to seeing you there soon. Thanks for logging in.